Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I am in a new studio slash room today. I call it a studio, it makes me feel more, a little bit more professional. Uh, we had someone else move into the house, so I lost my shooting room. And one of my roommates is out hanging out with his girlfriend for like a week. So here I am in his room. I hope you don't mind, Hunter. Love you. Today, we're gonna be taking a very interesting look at a new way for you and I to both manage our time. And this isn't necessarily a practical application, but it is more of a philosophy or an idea or a consideration for you to look at your goals and saying, what percentage of your time are you investing or spending in different areas of your life? Now, I got this idea from Jim Collins, who was on the Tim Ferriss Show a couple months ago. I think uh, they have like a two hour long interview, thanks Tim for the long form content, about how Jim Collins manages his time, how he goes about structuring his days, and other life philosophies or principles that he has invested in or spent time using and practicing over his years as a researcher. Now, if you don't know Jim Collins, he's an American author or researcher that studies great businesses and looks at the concepts that makes those businesses tick and helps people apply those concepts to their lives. He also looks at great achievers and different people in areas of their lives where they have been successful and understands how they tick and how they operate their lives and helps people apply those life principles to their business and helps businesses and people get better. He's the author of eight books with many on the bestseller list and a lot of them are business geeks go-tos on how to run a successful company. Some of the books that he's written are Built to Last, Good to Great, and Great by Choice. So now that we know a little bit about who he is, let's take a look at how he manages his time and how it can help us manage our time better. Collins uses a very interesting and unique approach to managing his time that he calls the 50-30-20 rule. He spends 50% of his time on creative pursuits. He spends 30% of his time, and by time I mean waking hours, obviously not 24 hours in a day, but looking at a day of eight to 12 hours. He spends 50% of his time in creative pursuits, anything that adds to his creative value. He spends 30% of his time to teaching others, and 20% of his time is reserved for tasks he can't delegate, things like groceries, paying the bills, and looking at the budget. At the end of each day, Collins opens up a spreadsheet where he has notes about what each day held. So stuff he wants to remember, stuff that he got done that day, just kind of a, a couple sentences about what the day was. Next to that, there's a column that is for creative hours. So he marks down how many hours he spent in creative pursuits that day. Now he doesn't have a goal of how many creative hours he uses in a day, but what he does have is he makes sure over the course of one year period, he makes sure that he has at least a thousand creative hours in his spreadsheet. So he wants to make sure that he's spent at least a thousand hours of his time over the past year researching topics, writing about topics, um, understanding and thinking in creative new ways. At the end of each day, Collins opens up a spreadsheet where he has notes about what each day held. So stuff he wants to remember, stuff that he got done that day, just kind of a, a couple sentences about what the day was. Next to that, there's a column that is for creative hours. So he marks down how many hours he spent in creative pursuits that day. Now this number can be zero, which is totally fine, or this number could be upwards of five to eight to even 10 creative hours per day. Now he doesn't have a goal of how many creative hours he uses in a day, but what he does have is he makes sure over the course of one year period, he makes sure that he has at least a thousand creative hours in his spreadsheet. So he wants to make sure that he's spent at least a thousand hours of his time over the past year researching topics, writing about topics, um, understanding and thinking in creative new ways. So on the spreadsheet, he has notes about what the day was like, how many creative hours he invested that day, and then finally the third column is a rating scale or what he would rate the day. And this scale is anywhere from negative two to positive two. And the reason he does negative two to positive two instead of saying, oh, the day was good, the day was bad, I felt like this, if his day just absolutely sucked and he hated all of it, obviously that's gonna be a negative two. If on the other hand, it was a great day, everything went awesome, it's a positive two. The reason he uses a system like this to measure his days is because he can then sort the spreadsheet in order from negative two to positive two and look at, okay, when my days were zero, what was I doing? What did I spend my time doing? He can also then look at the positive two days and say, okay, on positive two days, there's a consistent time of me spending time with my wife, hanging out with good friends, or just relaxing. And on negative two days, he can see that he always gets off task, uh, he's unproductive, or he kind of lets life get a hold of him instead of him taking control of his schedule and his days. 
Now, although the system is very simple, I found it extremely profound because I've just never heard of anyone measuring their time like this before. And of course, I've heard of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, but I think this is just a little bit differently than that because you're measuring your overall day and not necessarily the tasks you do uh, to get done. So I hope this helped you kind of get an understanding of a different way for you to manage your time and know that there isn't one right way to plan your day or plan your week or set goals or manage your time. There's so many different systems and ways and ideas out there to do that. So know that there isn't really one right way. Pick and choose from different people, different influences that you like and that you admire and plan your day, structure your time, do it like that. Elon Musk and Cal Newport do the time blocking or time chunking, which I absolutely love for um, off days to have a productive off day necessarily for blocking out some time to write or blocking out some time to edit a video or learn some new After Effects or Premiere tutorials, stuff like that. So whatever works for you, but just make sure it's effective and it's actually working and staying on task. If you want to learn some more ideas and insights, go ahead and hit this playlist right here up top. Or if you want a cool hack to your iPhone, go ahead and hit this video right here on how to use the Reminders app. Thanks so much for watching this video. And if you liked it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you have a question, just leave a comment down below or you can hit me up on Twitter at Dalton Mabry. That's my favorite place to hang out. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.